Hello Internet, I'm Remote Leg. Today, I thought I'd revisit the technology trees. I gave a very general description in an earlier video. Time for more detail. OK, a quick recap. There are three research categories, weapons, energy and high tech. We research all three categories in parallel, but we can only research one from each of these three at a time. This means we can work on three research projects at the same time. The question, what to research? This is weapons. I recommend that you decide on a weapon type you like and specialize in it. Ships hold a limited number of weapons, so it's better to put on a few high quality weapons rather than lots of low quality ones. Tinhead has chosen starfighters for our first research project. Not a great choice. Fighter bays have a size of 50, so we won't be able to fit many on our tiny ships at the start. Let's right click starfighters to turn off researching that. Don't worry about losing the 4% research we've completed so far. That'll be saved for us when we restart this research later. When picking a weapon specialization, look to the end of the tree to see what you'll end up with. All these features are important, but the first two, damage and range, are perhaps the ones to really check first. I like to go for long range because short range is no good for bases. Bases can't move, so they can't advance to get into range if the enemy fire from a distance. Your defense bases won't be very useful if they can't hit their targets. We start knowing beam weapons. They allow us to build pulse blasters, which are pretty crappy at level 1, but are great if we research all the way to beam superflow at the end. To get there, we research in this order. We already have beam weapons, which is a bonus. Next, we research enhanced beam weapons by left-clicking on it. Notice the little one that appears in the top right corner to say it's the one we're now researching. Enhanced beam weapons lets us build the Maxos Blaster. To get this benefit, our ships with pulse blasters will need to be retrofitted to rip out the pulse blasters and replace them with these shiny new Maxos Blasters. We will need to design some new ships. Oh yes, see how Wave Weapons is greyed out? If we hover over it, we see this technology can only be researched by the Wakaris race, which we are not. Discrimination. Forget this one. We can't research it. Bigots. Next comes efficient blasters. Notice the upward arrow. This means that completing this research will automatically improve existing technology without the need to retrofit anything. In this case, any ships equipped with Maxos blasters will immediately do one extra point of damage, have more range, and fire faster. No need to design new ships. Next, we research long-range lasers and advanced laser focusing. Watch out for places where two red lines merge. This means we need to research both advanced laser focusing and synchronized energy output before we can research advanced beams. So we need to go back and research high power blasters so we can then research synchronized energy output. Now we can research advanced beams and we have a clear path to beam intensification and beam superflow. That's a lot of work, but when enhanced beam weapons has finished research, efficient blasters will start automatically. One more thing to look for is the project size, which gives us some indication of how long it will take to complete the research. Speed things up by building more research stations and getting more scientists. Enhanced Beam Weapons has a project size of 120k. Efficient Blasters has a project size of 240k, which means it will take twice as long. Beam Superflow has a project size of 7680k. I don't want to talk about it. So, take a look at the different weapon types. They're grouped by colour, and decide what's right for you. We have iron weapons, graphitic weapons, area weapons, energy torpedo weapons, our old friends the starfighters, ship boarding, this lets us board enemy ships and steal their technology, missile weapons, which we already have, projectile weapons, a little bit of armour plating for defence, then a big grey slab dealing with ground combat. That's sending in the troops to you and me. OK, let's take a look at energy now. Energy is also colour coded, but we can afford to spread our research out a bit more. 
improving our reactors is a good place to start. Shields can probably wait for a little while because we hope to not meet anybody hostile in the beginning. Warp field precursors is the most important one because that will let us explore the galaxy. But we need to explore some ancient ruins before we can start researching it. In the meantime, we might want to improve our thruster engines and manoeuvring. Mining starts out at a decent level, so I think that can wait. Energy collection is very important, so I'd give this one some priority. Orbital assembly will allow us to build bigger ships, so we want that too. So we've gone from weapons, where we want to concentrate on a specific type, to energy, where we want pretty much everything on the board. Time to make some tough decisions. Personally, I would start with energy collection, so we can put collectors on all our bases. This stops some needlessly burning fuel, which means our freighters don't have to keep topping up their fuel tanks. I'd also work on the reactors to improve power to our ships and thrusters to make them go faster. These last two are with the proviso that we immediately switch to warp field precursors when possible. And lastly, we come to high-tech and industrial. The same colour coding rules apply, with blue at the top that's mainly to do with sensors and detectors. Green has more detection technology. Light blue is very important. This allows us to colonise planets. But these are big, expensive projects, so they take a long time to complete. You might think transport systems is not too important in the early game, but this allows us to invade planets and reconquer planets we've lost, so don't ignore it completely. If someone invades our colony and we don't have this researched, we have no way of taking that colony back again. Storage is good. Better cargo storage and fuel tanks. I'd go for this at the start. Improved docking bays can probably wait. Here are some paths for keeping our people healthy and happy. Research is very big. Some early investment can yield big dividends in faster research. Please note that building the Science Academy does not speed up research. It just improves the chance of getting more scientists, which in turn generate more research. Space Command saves us money on expenses, and Space Commerce gets us more income. So both of these are good for balancing the books. My personal picks are to work on research, then storage, then colonization in the early game. But as with energy, pretty well everything here is good to get. One thing I should mention is that we can left click on something we're already researching to initiate a crash research program. Say, for example, we're researching countermeasures. When one of our colonies gets invaded, one minute the colony is ours, next it's theirs. Oh no! we haven't researched transport systems, so we can't send troops to retake the colony. We cancel the countermeasures research and switch to transport systems, then see that it's going to take forever. We left-click on transport systems a second time to try and initiate a crash program, only to find that we don't have the cash to pay for it. Crash programs cost a lot of money and triple our research speed, but it still takes a long time. Of course, we still have to design and build troop transport ships after the research is complete, and who knows what unspeakable war crimes are going on in our colony while we wait. So there it is, a detailed look at the research trees and what choices we have. A lot comes down to personal preference based on play style. I prefer my ships to be nimble, so I work on that in the early game. But that won't help you if you prefer to turtle. In the end, it all comes down to what works best for you. Think about what sort of game you want to play, then tailor your research accordingly. And don't be afraid to switch research path if conditions change.